So this soap uh, was ultimately a bit of a mess. And it was a bit of a mess because I was actually just following the directions that I've heard from soap making forums say a bajillion times about how they like to incorporate their fresh juices into their soaps. And so I incorporated it that way. And I have questions. And I will tell you more about the questions that I have and the adventure that I had in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for another round of all things spinach, and we are doing another spinach soap. And I'm going to be, for this particular soap, while we are not changing out any of the oils or any of the ratios for anything that we're putting in, we are going to be incorporating the juice in a different way. And that way is called, I am putting the juice directly into my soap batter. So after it has hit emulsion, I'm going to put it in my soap batter but I'm going to be mixing it with glycerin because we were talking about nitrates and nitrites on the first video of all of this. And I wanted to give more information about that and start just kind of testing what it's going to do in soap. So it'll give me a good idea of whether or not it's going to do something cool in cosmetics. And so the likelihood that we're actually getting anything of real meaning within any of this is very, very, very slim because we are just dealing with spinach. But I wanted to play around with using some glycerin and some juice within this and just adding it to the soap batter and it got weird. So let's go to the video and the pouring and we can talk about the getting weird as well as more about nitrates and nitrites probably. Well, let's find out. Okay, so today we are going to be working with the spinach juice within a glycerin and adding the spinach juice directly to the the traced batter really so it will hit an emulsion and in this case it's going to actually hit just a very heavy trace pretty quickly because I am soaping at high temperatures because I want to so the reason why I am playing with this I'm doing equal parts glycerin and spinach juice and the reason why is because I really want to check the enzyme activity and how easily essentially the uh, actual spinach juice is going to break down the glycerin. And I wanna test that because we will be playing with spinach in some variety within cosmetics and glycerin could be a very good carrier for a lot of things that you could put into cosmetics. Now this, this actual soap recipe is going to be exactly the same with the exception of a one-to-one -one water to lye ratio because of the green spinach infusion, which in total was seven ounces. And so 3.5 ounces of the spinach juice and 3.5 ounces of the glycerin and so I did effectively remove that portion from the water we were doing a 1.5 to 1 with the last soap in order to ensure that we didn't end up with an overly soggy bar of soap now if you notice when I did the actual glycerin and juice you know and mixed it up it went from the glycerin because if you're familiar with glycerin and working with glycerin it's a very viscous substance right it's very thick it's very sticky all the jazz and in that one-to-one -one, the spinach broke it down almost immediately into a very very fluid state and so effectively what that is is just a whole bunch of really fluid stuff that I'm going to be putting in like you know the consistency of water into my traced oils and so um, yeah I'm going to be doing that and I want to talk about why I think it ended up essentially breaking down the glycerin so quickly, the spinach juice itself. And I think it has a lot to do with the enzymes within spinach juice, as well as the overall pH level of the spinach juice, and really the natural bacteria that exists within spinach juice. And so we should talk about all of that before we even think about incorporating this into a cosmetic, especially, you know, the bacteria growth.
And so for this, I did not like mix this in in any good way. I know a lot of soap makers say that they just put their fresh juices, like fruits and vegetable juices directly to their batter. <laughs> and I didn't mix it in. I didn't want to because I wanted it to give like this darker color with the spinach juice and the glycerin mixture. I wanted to, that to be the, you know, the swirl essentially. And so I didn't mix it in and change the color because I do a want to be able to tell the difference between all of these bars. And I don't want to put just toppers of botanicals or whatever on top of all of them. But two, uh, because I wanted to see what this would do with that extra glycerin inside of there, because I did soap this hot and I am going to see pop this. And I want to see how quickly the glycerin that is inside will effectively form you know melt and pour the solvents will start working and start binding to the fatty acids within the cold process recipe and see if we can actually get you know glycerin and you can see proper i mean effectively it's a glycerin river but it's going to be a big one is my thinking so this is a big old sloopy mess and there's kind of not a lot that i can do to make it pretty on top i will play with this until it looks somewhat reasonable before i put it in the oven to seep pop and gel but with this, again, with the glycerin breaking down with the spinach juice so quickly, again, the, the enzyme spinach is very rich in enzymes that could break down the glycerin as well as it's very, very high in vitamin C and other antioxidants, which could contribute to the breakdown of glycerin. And most importantly, obviously the pH is going to be a bit of a concern. We've talked about the pH before, but uh, fresh spinach juice actually does have natural bacteria and microorganisms within it that could produce additional enzymes that could break down the glycerin faster. And so I actually tested this at a, uh, well, we did the one-to-one -one, just barely, but I tested this in different ratios all the way up to 10% of the spinach juice to 90% of the glycerin. And it still got super liquidy, like we're dealing with water the entire time very, very quickly. And so I think with that, what that means to me is that obviously glycerin is not going to be a good carrier uh, for the spinach in this form, for spinach juice in this form, because it will break down too easily. And it will then, it could potentially lead to any sort of microbial activity within a cosmetic. And so obviously glycerin is going to be out as far as a carrier for spinach juice. I am realistically thinking spinach juice itself is out for any of the cosmetics at this point, but you never know, you know, I might change my mind. Let's go check out this cut. Okay, and on to the cut. And this again, as I said, was sea popped and gelled. And I don't know, all things considered, I did a pretty okay job with, you know, getting the top to look kind of pretty. Apologies for all the banging, but look at that. Holy crap. That is a big old chunk of something, something. And anything could happen at this point. That could be just a very, very soggy mess when we open this up. And it's not soggy, but it is a mess. It has the potential, it's partially congealed there. And so what we're looking at there is a, we're effectively a big old glycerin river, right? And so as the soap continues to set and cure and lose its water weight and do all of the things and finish saponification, this will congeal and actually just kind of stick to the bar as a piece of the soap. But right now it's super messy. If I wanted to, I could just dig my finger into that and scoop it all out. If you ever see that on the outside of your soap and you don't want it, you could just stick your finger in it and scoop it all out. You know what I mean? I'm not going to do that though, because I think it's interesting and I want to test one of these bars, especially one that has any sort of big glycerin pockets like that for the overall uh, lather tests that we're going to do for all these soaps. Also, the side of that bar, that loaf, it looks very beautiful. I'm not mad at that at all, you know? I think that's very stunning. And again, these are all naturally colored, so we have not put any colorants in outside of just what the, this, the soap itself, well, the spinach itself is going to deliver either via the oils and the infusion that we did there, or in this case, with the juice that was mixed with the glycerin. And so it's a very pretty bar of soap. It's definitely a pale green in the bulk of it. And then the parts where it was just the spinach juice, very, very dark, beautiful green. And it is interesting. So that big old mess that was the, the soap when I, the soap batter, when I just kind of put it in and used my whisk a little bit to push it down in areas before pouring it into the mold, 
looked really messy, really sloppy. A lot of that, if you remember, a lot of that glycerin spinach juice concoction did rise to the surface. And if you notice through all of this, there is no, there's no pockets of, you know, water or wetness or anything weird on the surface. Instead, it did migrate to the bottom. That's where the bulk of it did ultimately form. Now, why is that? Biggest reason is because soap is going to soap and saponification is going to do its thing. And so while you're going through your hydrolysis and everything with the soap, so the fatty acids and the sodium hydroxide solution are doing its thing, all of the potential water that can be bound is going to be bound. And so they will find it within even the really wet portions of what was a very, very fluid, you know, solution with the spinach juice and the glycerin in order to complete saponification. Now, this does need to lose all the extra water weight that is in it, just like any other bar of soap. So yesterday's soap was a 1.5 to 1 ratio, and really all you need in a soap recipe, that's how we get our saponification number, right, is one part water to one part sodium hydroxide, and so it needs to lose all that excess moisture. Granted, I do put kale and clay, and I did yellow dock within this as well, so a lot of that water gets absorbed anyway, and so it leads to a shorter cure time, to a better bar, better longevity, all of the jazz, because I incorporate those clays and those dry additives. But it does still need to lose some water weight, and this needs to just set and allow that glycerin to continue working with saponification to really firm up and do its thing, because that is a mess. It's not fun at all, but you'll get to see it in a few days, just a few days of it sitting next to the dehumidifier you'll be able to see what it ultimately looks like. So I'm very excited to show you all of that. Now, with this particular soap, I did scent it with a, a fresh cut grass, which I believe I got from Nature's Garden. I had a little bit of fresh cut grass left. I used to use the fresh cut grass in my kids' bath bomb classes for like birthday parties and workshops and stuff like that. And uh, the, thinking that the kids would love it, right? They'd love to have a bath bomb that smelled like fresh cut grass. They didn't like it. They didn't like it at all. And so they went through the bubble gum and the cotton candy and the blueberry and the raspberry and all of that really quickly. But they said, you know, miss me with the, the fresh cut grass. And so I've been using it in anything that's kind of botanically based in order to get rid of the rest of it that's left. And this really fit the bill because it's infused with all the spinach within the oils as well as the spinach juice. It's very green and that's a very green smelling scent. So they totally worked out. With this, we will be doing a lather test and we will be looking for if the glycerin contributed at all to the lather as compared to yesterday's soap, as well as obviously instant bubble payoff. Do we have it? Do we not? And any other weirdness that might occur within all of this. But ultimately, yes, this test was done in soap in advance because I knew you could not mess up soap as far as putting water or glycerin in, or you know juices into it as to that to see what, how I can push this for my soap generally within, um, or my cosmetics generally within all of this. And so what I am deciding is that no, I don't think that we're going to be using spinach juice within the cosmetics. We're going to have to think of something else because I do not want to deal with the horrors of figuring out how to actually preserve a system like this. But so far so good, that is soap number two. Are you super excited for that lather test? I am. And there it is. You can see on the very bottom how that glycerin immediately formed. Like you have a congealed glycerin going on because it was a hot solution. I've been pouring all of these soaps hot. I did see pop them. And so immediately you're getting like your melt and pour on the bottom of that, which I find really cool. It does more to just further the belief and the understanding that this crystalline structure that everybody loves to talk about and keeps getting wrong is formed during saponification because we saw it in real time within a cold process soap just by nature of adding some extra glycerin. So there's that, that's fun. These have got to finish curing. Well, they've got to lose some weight before I can actually do the lather test on them because I do want that slimy stuff on the bottom to be reabsorbed by the soap itself, congeal, do all the things before we can test them. So that'll come in a couple days. But for now, all things considered, I don't hate that. I think it's kind of cute. It ended up really, really adorable. So I'm happy to put it in my line and do all the things. You cannot get these at soapandclay.com quite yet. I have an idea of a picture of soaps, you know, 
and I am not going to release them all on the website until I have that picture in totality. And that's like 12 soaps. So they're not there yet. There's other stuff there though, probably. I've got beer soaps and wine soaps. For the next recipe, we're going to be keeping it very, very simple because it's important to do simple soaps so we can actually test what the spinach is going to do within just the oil itself. Remember, we're running all kinds of different tests with all of this, seeing what the lather ultimately does. So stick around for that. Like, comment, subscribe, share, all the things to help Al Gore be happy in his rhythm, you know, Sudzers, members, members first, you guys already got this. Thank you for being members. You guys are awesome. Sudzers that are not members, that's okay. You're awesome too. I know you're going to like and comment, do all the things. General population, I don't know who you are. So cool that you exist. And yeah, I'm out of here. I have a million and two things to do. Um, my, my daughter is making her stage debut this weekend uh, in her in a children's theater play and she's carrying the banner. She's new, She's on the Newsies cast. Yes, I did start crying. I'm very proud of her, but she's not actually a Newsie. She's playing Pulitzer, which is crazy. Anyway, I'm going to go. I hope you guys had a good time with this one. I will see you guys all again tomorrow slash later on today. I don't know. It's all very fluid right now, but it will be another round of spinach infused soapy fun. Bye.